Good morning, everybody. It's uh, another Sunday. We're back again. I don't know what the weather's like up in your area, but uh, we've got thunderstorms rolling through Lucan right now. Uh, some really heavy downpours just came. I hope we don't lose hydro so we can at least get through this service. <clears throat> we'll see how it goes. Um, it's been another good week. Weather's been moderate. We've had rain. Corn's coming up beautifully. I see a lot of the grain already in. There's still a little left. Uh, a lot of bales. A lot of people baling straw. And actually yesterday I saw somebody baling the small bales. I didn't think anybody used those anymore. I remember sitting on the wagon there, having to stack the wagon with those small bales as they come out of the baler. That was always a fun July job. Things are going good. Um, looking at the statistics on uh, this pandemic, uh, our numbers are coming down. Yesterday alone, we only had 70 cases in Ontario and uh, 236 nationally, which is really good. Our numbers are coming down, so that means we're doing the right thing. We're protecting ourselves. We're protecting the people around us as we go out. I'm seeing a lot of people there wearing masks, practicing that social distancing. So if you do have to go out, be safe about it. Wear that mask. Keep your distance. We need to drive this down to zero. And then we can get back together and find some kind of new normal in society. Um, we're going to continue our services online through August, through this month. Now on the 23rd, I do have a guest speaker speaking, um, Chris Walker from the Huron Hospice. He will be joining us uh, <clears throat> through uh, this virtual medium and uh, he'll be sharing the message about Huron Hospice. So on that date, that's two weeks away, I believe, uh, we're gonna have a guest and uh, we'll take it from there. Also, if anybody would like to support our ministry, you can send your checks in to uh, box 262, uh, C4th Ontario. Uh, please specify whether it's for Northside United or Cavan United. Uh, we need, we still have expenses to pay even when we're not meeting uh, in our churches. We still have bills that come in that need to be dealt with on a, a monthly basis. So if you have an opportunity, send in your support there, however and whenever you can. Uh, what else? Uh, <clears throat> that's, that's all I have to start with. So just be safe out there. We'll begin our service here today. I pray we keep a hydro one. In keeping with United Church practices and fulfilling the calls to action in the Truth and Reconciliation Report, we in the United Church of Canada recognize the Aboriginal peoples of this land, the Inuit and the Métis, as the original stewards of this land. We are all people of these treaties signed in good faith. Let us live up to the spirit of these treaties in all our undertakings, respecting the land and learning from these peoples. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up like wings with wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. We need this kind of hope. Come, worship the Holy One who meets you where you are. Come, open yourself to the God who lifts you up. We are here to worship. We are here to surrender to God. Let us pray. God of presence, as you walked upon the water to meet the disciples, meet us in the midst of the storms of our lives. God of renewal, as you lifted Peter from the water, lift us from the despair to hope, from distraction to focus, from death to life. God of journey, direct us in your way. Work out your purpose in and through our lives. We pray in the name of Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. God is with you. Christ is present. The Holy Spirit surrounds us and unites us all. But we have turned our eyes to the challenges of this life, lost our focus on God and sinking into sin. You can begin again. Imagine a new way of being. We cast aside our dreams to maintain the familiar. We have cast aside the dreams of others, fearful of what that might mean. But God loves you. Christ will lift you from the waves of doubt, and the Holy Spirit will rescue you from the currents of insecurity and alienation. 
in these moments of quiet reflections, confess to God all that separates you from God and from one another. Take heart. Do not be afraid. Everyone who calls on the name of God will be saved. We are forgiven. Live as a free and forgiven people. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> and our prayer of illumination today. <clears throat> Most loving God, source and goal of all creation, you are a fierce wind and a storm. Storms are much less than the work of your little finger. Please give to us that faith which does not panic when things go wrong, but dares to go forward with humble commitment to the next steps to which Christ calls us. In his name and to your praise and the unity of the Spirit, all praise and honor is yours. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes from Peter, Paul's letter to the Romans. Moses writes this about righteousness that is by the law. The person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe it in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is the Lord of all and richly blesses all who call upon him. For everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they who call upon the one who have not believed in? How can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? How can they hear without hearing someone preach about, preach, preaching to them? How can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. These are the words of the Lord. And our gospel reading today comes from the gospel according to Matthew. Immediately, Jesus bade his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. And when the disciples saw him on, walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Lord, is it... If it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Gospel of Christ. Hear what these ancient words are saying to us today. <clears throat> you got to admit, we are living in unprecedented times right now. Global pandemic sweeping the whole world. Cries against systemic racism. Political conflicts like we haven't seen in a long time. We have global warming, extreme weather hitting parts of the country, extreme hailstorms damaging out west, hurricanes hitting the south, tornadoes ripping everywhere. 
We've never faced so many global problems at any one time. An economic meltdown to top it all off. As I said, these are unprecedented times we're living on in. And when this is all over, who knows what the new normal is going to look like. It's not going to look like it used to. That's for sure. It feels like we're fighting a war on so many fights, on so many fronts. We're coming to the end of our ropes. How much longer can we go on like this? Let's face it, we're tired, we're fatigued, we're tense. We're a nervous bunch right now. Just when we think we've gotten over this last big wave that has hit us, another huge one comes straight at us. How are we going to get through this all? When I think of preparing ahead, I often think of athletes. Athletes train themselves not only physically, but mentally and spiritually in order to accomplish their feats. <clears throat> they ha have an entire body literature to excel at their sports. I like to call it an overture of runner's wisdom. A lot of runner's wisdom is simple common sense, really. Drink water before you run, warm up, stretch, push a little harder every day when you exercise, go a little further every day. Don't overdo it though. Wear good shoes, have good equipment with you. Trust your body when it's telling you to slow down. Let your instincts guide you. It'd be great if the wind was always at our backs as we're pushing along, pushing us along and helping us along. But sadly, that's not always the case. I like to think back to those old days of the sailing ships, those old square rigging ships. They had not only the sails, but they had oars or galleys. And when the wind wasn't blowing in their, their direction, they were able to row. The square riggings there pretty much was limited to some kind of tailwind. They could take up to a 60 degree wind. After that, you had to rely on the row oars. You added a triangular sail to the, the mix then. Now you can sail into the wind. Those sails there, the modern sailboats, can actually sail into a headwind. They tacked up and down zigzagging. The sail actually creating lift that drives the boat in the direction they want to go. Similar to a wing there on an airplane, creating lift that lifts it up. The sail creates the lift and they drives them forward, even into a headwind. There was an article by Jonathan Beverly of Runner's World, an online magazine that talked about running into the wind. He explains that most of us, when we're running into the wind, we tend to work harder, push harder, bear down, tense up. That causes tension, causes fatigue and exhaustion. Instead, he explains what we need to do is the exact opposite. Learn to relax, lean into the wind, allow the wind to dictate your pace. As he puts it, we learn to dance with the wind. Now, surprisingly, he didn't learn this by watching other runners. He learned it by watching the hawks fly around the fields. And he noticed the birds didn't struggle greatly against a headwind. Instead, they used the wind to do a kind of a mid-air dance, circling sometimes, swooping, twirling. They dove, they picked, made advantages of uplifts. They relaxed and played in the wind. At some points, they seemed to just hang there. At other points, they made slow progress, zigzagging, flying forward into that wind. Their goal was not a measured progress, but play and enjoyment. They were masters of seizing the moment, going with the flow, adapting to the wind as it varied, adapting to life, really. We too could learn lessons from the birds, especially when it comes to dealing with the hurricanes and the storms and the wind gusts that come into our lives. Our first instinct when trouble hits is to either put up our dukes and fight it out or run and hide. That fight or flight response. Most of us will try to bear down and battle our way through it. And some other people will just give up. They'll run, hide to, until the danger is past. Despite living life through the sun and the storms, most of us believe in our hearts that life should be forecast with beautiful skies, always a wind at our back, no problems. We expect the life that we always have a tailwind to help push us along. But that's not the way life really is, is it? Bad things happen. Bad weather comes along. We don't live in a world where there's no obstacles, no challenges thrown at us. Try hard as we will, challenges and turmoil will find us. At some point in our lives, we're going to have to deal with a challenge. We're going to have to deal with walking into that headwind. 
or we're going to have to tack into that headwind. Let's face it, the norm for life includes stormy days, sleet, hail, cool breezes, and sometimes scorching heat. We seldom have a day without there's out some kind of wind, without some kind of challenge we have to deal with. I think this is what the hawks know. Life isn't about struggling against that headwind. It's about relaxing into the wind, tacking into that wind, allowing the wind to guide you, set your pace. Sometimes that wind's at your back, helping you along, and it's great. And sometimes that wind is in your face, slowing you down, forcing you to zigzag, forcing you to tack into it. Well, in our gospel reading today, we read about the disciples. They were in a boat in the open water and a storm comes up. They're rowing into a headwind. They're fighting that headwind, rowing as hard as they can, and probably the other half are bailing as fast as they can because the boat's being swamped slowly. And through that storm, Jesus walks out to them. And thinking he's a ghost, they're all afraid. They're frightened. They say they scream at him, fearing what they saw. But Jesus tells them, don't be afraid, it's I. Seeing Jesus walking on the water, well, Peter, you gotta love Peter, always gotta challenge Jesus somehow, gotta open his mouth, challenges Jesus to say, hey, make me walk on the water too. And Jesus invites Peter to step out of the boat. Peter accepts the challenge, and he starts walking to Jesus, focusing on Jesus, having no problem. But suddenly he notices the wind, he notices the waves, and he loses that focus. He begins to tense up, and he begins to sink. At which point Jesus reaches out to him and lifts him up. And as they get into that boat together, that storm dies down. The wind dies down, the storm's over. Our faith has to be about keeping our focus on Jesus. It's about relaxing into the wind, dancing with the wind, letting the wind guide our path, sometimes tacking into that wind when necessary. Our lives are guided, spirited, even and lifted up by that ever presence breath of God, the Holy Spirit. Faith allows us to ride the winds of the Spirit. And when life gets rough, by trusting in God, we can get through it. By trusting the help that Jesus brings and knowing that God is near, our fight is irrelevant and our tensions only serve to hold us back. To navigate the life with Jesus, we just need to relax and ride the waves, ride the wind, dance with the wind. It reminds me of that song that we played right at the beginning, The Lord of the Dance. Jesus leads, and we are his partners. And when we do that, we're never going to have a problem we can't get through. Fear and the urge to fight against those turbulent forces only leaves us exhausted and depleted. At times, we either give up, drowning in our sorrows, or we work harder and harder and become more angry and more bitter at everything around us. It's only when we have faith in a power stronger than the weather, stronger than any obstacle or challenge that can be thrown at us, that our worries can be dispersed. We relax and ride the waves of our lives like that surfer on the sea. There was a social uh, post on social media I saw this past week. Really sums this up beautifully. As this goes, faith doesn't take you out of your problems. Faith takes you through your problems. Faith doesn't take away the pain. Faith gives you the ability to handle the pain. Faith doesn't always take you out of the storm. Faith calms you in the midst of the storm. When we rely on faith, when we succumb to the winds of the Spirit, we enter into this holy love dance with God, with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit. And the dance brings joy to our lives and peace deep in our souls. There's always going to be times when we have to face that headwind, but going into the headwind does not have to be a hardship. It's only as hard as we make it. All we need to do is to trust in Jesus Christ and lay our lives before him. <coughs> and we can begin to dance that dance of life. We can begin to find joy within sorrow, glitter in the dust, play in the headwinds. We can allow that wind to lift us up like the sail that drives that ship forward by the lift that sail creates. Trusting in God gives us the ability to handle the challenges that the world throws at us. Help can come from the most unusual places. William Butler Yeats wrote a poem about the turn of the 20th century, 
about the innocence of childhood and the ability of a child to dance unheeded in the wind to the cares of the world. As it goes, dance there upon the shore. What need had you to care? For wind or waters roar and tumbling out your hair. That salt drops have wet. Being you young, you have not known the fool's triumph nor yet. Yet lost as soon as won. Nor the best laborer dead. And all the sheaves to bind. What need have you to dread the monstrous crying wind? Being a Christian and giving your life to Christ doesn't mean you don't take the world seriously or feel the burdens and the challenges that come at us. It doesn't mean that we're not going to face challenges in this life that come up or it's the fierce storms or the headwinds that are going to buffet us sometimes. It means that when Christ is your dance partner, you can turn the most undesired force into an exciting adventure. For in the end, Everything in the world must dance to the tune of the Creator. He is the Lord of the dance, and we are His partners. So dance and live. Tact when you have to, and enjoy when we can. Thanks be to God. Let us continue in prayer. <clears throat> oh God, when trials beset us, it's natural to be afraid. You call us to be courageous, but often we find our faith lacking. When we are asked to take risks, we often take the easy way out. When the unfair things happen to other people, we often are too timid to speak out. But you, O oh Lord, are the God of justice and compassion. You are to be trusted. Have mercy on us. Forgive us of our sins and mistakes and lead us forward, even when the way seems dangerous and difficult. O Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord, help us to take the risks in your name, to do which others think is impossible, to do what we think is sometimes impossible. Help us to dream and to do, to plan and to execute, to start and to finish, to sec be secured in the knowledge that you, with you comes salvation, and from you comes the power that we need to accomplish what must be done. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Saving God, we remember before you today the nations and the communities, those with cause to despair, and we hold those countries at war, and those that are divided in living conflict. We especially pray for the people of Beirut as they deal with the aftermath of that terrible explosion at the port where hundreds were killed, thousands hurt, and many are made homeless. Be with them as they deal with the aftermath of this. May social groups there be able to come together to bring them the aid that they need to rebuild their lives. We remember before you the oppressed, the persecuted, especially the poor and the needy, especially the homeless and those that live on the streets in our cities and our lands beyond our borders. We remember, too, those who were discriminated against, the communities where law and order and morality and respect have broken down. <coughs> and lastly, this day, as a community and a family of faith, we remember before you those that we named to you this morning, those who grieve and those who are sick, those who are chronically ill or have entered hospital. We pray for Kevin Mithu Sarakak, the pastor in Bangladesh, who teaches the word of Christ in a country which is sometimes persecutes the Christian people as he tries to bring the word of Christ to the people. And we also especially hold in our prayers those that we name now in the silence of our hearts and those whose names are known alone to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear our prayer. And now let us say the prayer that Jesus taught us, as together we all say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, that peace that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge of God's total and inclusive love, shown to us when God sent his son Jesus to walk on the water to bring us relief from those storms. And that same Jesus is still saving us from those storms after 2,000 years. That same Jesus is still redeeming and broken hearts and lives to this very day. And the blessing of God, the creator, the sustainer, and the redeemer be with you all and remain with you always. Amen.